name is Jessica Winkler and I'm a pro kite surfer from Canada, but I live in the Caribbean in the Turks and Caicos. Um, well, I grew up snowboarding and wakeboarding. I remember the first time I saw kiteboarding, it just put the two elements of the sport together and I had this very instinctive thing where I was like, I knew I would be good at it. And I'll never forget this, this guy walks in to pay his bill. He came to me and I'm like, dude, what happened to your face? <laughs> Cause I was 22. And he, so he tells me that he's a kite surfer. And okay, keep in mind, this is 2001. Like the safety systems were like non-existent. So he's like, oh, I got taken up and I got smashed into the cliffs there on Dallas road and it shattered my skull. And the first thing I could think of, I was like, well, do you still do this sport? And he's like, yeah, I love it. And that moment I was sold. I was like, if that shattered your skull and you love it, then that's the sport for me. Oh God, it was, it was a hard time. I mean, I, every time it was windy, I would go down to the beach and I would see all the guys set up. And I used to beg them. I'm like, can you teach me to do this sport? Like, I want to do it so badly. And they're always like, no, you're a girl. You're not strong enough. It's too difficult. And I was so discouraged. I said to my husband at the time, I was like, I really want to learn this sport. He's like, well, you're, you're just too small and you're a girl and you're not strong enough. So I got really frustrated. So I actually, um, started going to the gym and doing heavy weightlifting six days a week. I was like, okay, if I'm not strong enough, I will get strong enough. And I did, I, I worked out so hard and you know, it was, it was a really difficult thing to be told that because I'm a girl, I can't do something. And that happened for seven years. Well, believe it or not, the first time I swam in the ocean, I was 29 and I did a trip around South America. So um, in Mancora, I took my first kite lesson and Mancora is typically known for waves. <laughs> and I remember like three hours into my lessons, I was just shaking from like absolute terror. I was so afraid. And the guy was like, are you cold? Why don't you come in and just warm up? And I'm like, no, I'm terrified because I just didn't understand, you know, what was going on out there. But I was like, nope, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna learn to kite, like, that's fine. So, you know, um, even to this day, you know, I, I still am not comfortable with the ocean. It's, it's challenging for me. Competing has changed for me over the years. Um, you know, when I first started competing, there were no women. So uh, I had to start competing with men, which was really difficult because we're not physically built the same. So I always knew I wasn't going to win. Um, it's really hard to go in a competition and know you're not going to win no matter how well you do. Um, but it, it's good because it gave me the opportunity to learn how to be tough. When I, when I had decided that I wanted to pursue my career uh, as an athlete in kite surfing, I was like, okay, I opened up my school in Nicaragua and I had a bunch of investors. And it was funny because I was thinking, okay, I can't put any money into this, but I can put me into this. And I realized that that wasn't enough. And so I thought, okay, well, they can't get rid of me if I'm famous and I'm the one who, who makes it all happen. So, you know, I was like, I need to get famous. So how am I gonna do that? So I started looking at kite magazines and I realized that it was all men. And the, there was like a couple pictures of girls, but they were more arm candy or they were like, just, they weren't really doing anything. So um, I had contacted a bunch of agents and they told me that there was no value in women in sports. And I've never honestly had any more like discouraging thing and time after time they're like I'm sorry you just there's no value in you and I was like okay here's the problem there's no media platform so how is a woman supposed to have value if they can't even show you who they are so we came up with this idea of 
doing a competition called the Most Influential Girl Kite Surfer. And we opened it up for people to nominate women that were exceptional. You know, they were kiters, they were um, doing awesome things in their community, just, just cool girls and, and nominate them and tell us why they thought they deserved to be nominated for our competition. A girl in England who was making a, the first ever female kite magazine. So she put the winner of our competition on the front cover and we, we featured the top 10 girls. And this was like the first media platform for women for kiting. We ran the competition a second year and I got like 25 sponsorships for girls. And then things changed. Things changed a lot. And now if you open a kite magazine, it's half women and half men. Like it was a massive, massive shift. I wasn't doing this for me at all. I was like, we need to create something because I want to make value. And then I ended up getting my own sponsorship. So it, it was really cool, you know, for helping them. Then I got what I, I was desiring. One of my first big competitions, believe it or not, was the World Championships. And it was the funniest thing. So I, I mean, I'd won a couple freestyle competitions and a friend of mine, He's an older gentleman, very cool guy, very eccentric. And I used to call him the flying Jesus. And we go to the lagoon and we ride up wind. And I'm like, well, what do I do? He's like, just go fast. Just go right down wind and go fast. And I'm like, okay. So we do that for like a couple hours. And um, I had like a GPS unit on my arm. And so later that night after dinner, he's like, so you just qualified for the world championships. It's in three weeks. We're going to France. I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't even like, I don't even know what you're saying. And he's like, well, six women in the world and 32 men can qualify for the world championships of speed racing and your time on the GPS, you made it. I have never done anything so physically demanding and violent and competitive and generally just terrifying in my whole life. <laughs> like you would literally have to hit somebody's kite on either side. It would be like parallel parking and having to smash each car to get your spot. And then if a good gust of wind came, the, the really good guys would try to steal your space. So you'd have to fight them. Like it was, it, it was the best thing in the world to me because I ended up getting third. So now I have a third in the world championship title. Um, and for the rest of my career, you know, I was always like, okay, no, we can do this. Like I did not know what I was doing. I had a team of people helping me. I just tried. I was there, I did my best, and I did well. Now, if you, connect the here, you know, really, I'm very passionate about telling other people, like, stop letting your fear debilitate you. Just show up and try. People don't look at you and think you're stupid if you don't do well. People look at you and go, oh my God, you're so brave because you even showed up. And that's something I really need everyone to understand. You know, it's important. <laughs> One of the hardest things is just realizing that being a female, it's, it's a hindrance and, and we're not able to do what we want just because of our gender. And that was really difficult back then, you know, and I worked really, really hard to overcome that, but I'm, it's so nice to see nowadays, you know, that's changing and, you know, there's so many females now on the kite beaches around the world and, and I just want to really, you know, help promote to females that they can do this. It doesn't matter their size or their strength. It's not, it's not a gender thing. <laughs> I think a warrior woman is someone who implements change and is the one who sees the line and takes the step over it. You know, I mean, I've always been called the black sheep, you know, and that's, that's the thing. It's the black sheep makes the change. 
So I, I think, you know, the world is changing, but I'm a bit older and, and um, there's a lot of us at this age who have really fought hard to open up what, what is happening now. And so that, that's what I really feel that there are some people in this world that were meant to be warriors because we needed to make a change. Thank you.